Rode has done it finally. The Rodecaster Duo, the Rodecaster Pro 2, you can now do a full live stream mix with their beta firmware update and drivers for virtual drivers. They've included now that it works really well inside of the Rodecaster Pro 2 or Duo. So what I want to do, I'll just kind of go through my setup, show you what you need to do to get this installed if you have a Rodecaster Pro 2 or Rodecaster Duo and you want to uh, try out this beta software. Now, again, I'm saying this is beta software, so you need to be aware that you may have issues with this. And I know people that have had issues with it. So this is not going to be perfect. Uh, me personally, I actually had some issues with it at first, but it is now running well. And I'm just gonna show you my setup and how to get this installed. Okay, so let's talk about getting set up for this beta program. So you, first of all, there is, I'm gonna provide a link to this right here down in the description because this is going to allow you to sign up. Uh, you can go on this button here and it's going to give you a sign up for the beta program. What I'm going to do is then send you an email. When you get an email, it's going to look like this and it's going to show you how to access the firmware and download everything that you need to get this working, including Road Central for both Mac and Windows and then the virtual device driver for Windows. Now, I do believe that the Mac version is now out you need you do need this okay this is important you do need this to get this working so you have to download a driver you have to download the beta version of road central and you have to get access to the beta firmware so let's show you that real quick how do you get access to the beta firmware once you have signed up for this because you have to get your roadcaster into beta mode so let's show that now all right so here is my roadcaster first thing you want to do for for your roadcaster you want to click on your little gear cog there in the top right corner. Okay, you click on that, that's gonna give you access to your uh, configuration uh, buttons, which one of them is system. You're gonna to wanna to click on system, and then you're gonna to wanna to go to information here on the lower right. And then at the top, view device information. Okay, when you get to this screen, okay, the little, the black box that has all your information in it is actually, some, <laughs> You have to touch this 10 times. So you're going to click on this 10 times, count them out. So you make sure it's right. When you cl click on that 10 times, it will then reconfigure into beta mode. It's currently what I'm in now. So I'm not going to go through that again, but that is what you do. That is what they're telling you to do here. Okay. So follow these directions in your email, but that is where you'll do it right here on your roadcaster. Once you do that, and you install the drivers, you install Road Central, then you're ready to get into the setup for the Roadcaster. So let's talk about that now. So when you're ready to set up this link here, which is in their uh, FAQs, I'll also provide a link for. This is going to walk you through the process of setting this up, okay? And we're gonna get down to this point right here, I'm not going to dive into multi-track USB output right now. That's a separate video for a separate day. Okay, for you people that need up to 16 individual devices, this is what you're going to want to do eventually. I'm not covering that right now because I'm going to be honest with you, I have not really dove into it myself. Kind of did by accident. We'll talk about that at the end of the video. There's a couple ways you can do this. Okay. I prefer using Road Central. It's easier. It's just, you know, simplified. Um, you could also do it on here. If you're familiar with the routing using the UI on the Roadcaster, you can do that too. Either way is perfectly fine. But for the purposes of this video, I'm going to show you through Road Central. One, because I can capture it on OBS easily and everybody will be able to clearly see it. All right, so once you get everything installed, uh, and you get your firmware updated to 1.4.3, then there's a couple different areas that we're going to focus on here. Okay, first of all, we're gonna to go to device configuration and you're gonna to wanna to go to output and then multi-track. And you're gonna to wanna to go to USB input and you wanna make sure that this is turned on to expanded. When it is on expanded, it will be blue as shown. By default, it should be in standard, but you're gonna put it to expand it. And that's going to then reconfigure your buses, the USB one, and it will also feature now the virtual devices as part of that. Okay, so once you do that, you've got that, then you're gonna to want to go step back and go to audio setup. Here, 
is where you're going to set what your fader is going to control. Okay, so all your devices are now down here. You can see all the new virtual devices. You have five of them, which is really nice. You got chat, you got game, you got music, you got A and B. Now, you can use these virtual devices for absolutely anything you want. You don't have to use chat for chat. You don't have to use game for game. I personally, because I'm on a dual PC setup, I'm not going to be running games on the stream PC. So this is an extra virtual device that I can use for whatever I want. So if you have a reason to use this, if you're in a similar situation as I am, feel free to use it. Okay. It's there for you. So my current setup, um, I have my first four hardware faders and then my three uh, virtual faders that are controlled through this multifunction uh, knob here, you know, so I can go and I can, you know, press this and then I can control the levels of these three channels just by pressing and going through and doing that. All right. Those are what controls those three right channels, but the four hardware faders are controlling these first four guys here. Okay. So that's what I've done. And you just simply click and drag these up and place them where you want them. Okay. And that's how you sign these to these channels. If you want to get clear a channel out, you just hit the little X there at the top. You can also customize the color of each of these channels. If you want to change them, you know, you got these options here under the channels there, which is cool. I have for my first four channels, I have my microphone, I have my virtual music, my virtual A and my virtual B. Here on the first of the uh, multifunction knob faders, I have my sound pads and I have the chat virtual device. And then I have my USB 2, which is actually going to my uh, game PC. It's also called uh, uh, USB secondary or duo main secondary, I think something like that. But this is uh, going to my gaming PC. Now, some people, if you're a single PC setup, uh, doing gaming and streaming, then you would send this as a separate uh, USB into your main PC. And this would be a separate USB bus that you can use. Um, and for most of the road uh, demos that they show, that's how they use this as a single PC setup. But for dual PC streamers like me, this is going to my game PC. Now, once you get this set up and you will set back out and you're going to go back into device configuration and go into routing. And this is where you're going to tell the roadcaster that you want, uh, you know, your, what devices are going to be part of your mixes or for your monitors, for your headphones, uh, for USB, you know, for your duo chat bus. All right. So my first bus that I'm going to work through is the USB one. This is the one that's going to the stream PC. This is the main dude that are, that's important to set up. For me, I do not want to hear my microphone in that mix because I use the, the chat uh, USB, which is a separate bus for my microphone. And I have that is what you're listening to right now inside of OBS is this right here uh for me it's called duo chat okay or if you're a pro 2 guy we pro 2 chat so i do not want my microphone in my mix so i've got this x'd out um you can add it if you want or you can remove it just by left clicking on it, okay now i have my music virtual my uh, virtual a and virtual b and then my pads uh the usb chat on the right for people talking in discord that's coming in that i want to send to the stream that's how this is coming in and i've got a level control there that i can control the level of the people talking in discord or teams or zoom or whatever i'm using for a chat program and then i have my my gaming audio right from my game pc and anything i've got going on on the game pc coming into the USB 2, or for me, it's called Duo Secondary. Okay. That is my USB 1 main mix, which is what you would hear if I was live streaming and you were hearing all the audio coming into OBS. All right, second one is my chat mix. Literally the only thing going there is my microphone. All right, if you want to have, say if you got multiple people talking for a podcast, then you can obviously add more sources in here. Uh, you would obviously need to reconfigure this, of course, and your in your audio channels uh, to add the all the separate microphones. But 
you know, that's an option too. But for me, the literally the only thing going into this is my microphone. Again, I've got, if I want to listen to myself, I can listen, but typically don't. But that's, this is controlling the level of my mic and I can cut this down. or I can cut this back up to the level, and that is the level going to OBS, okay? This little arrow here does it, or the little line here, that shows you my monitor level that would be coming to my headphones or going to my studio monitors, okay? Again, I use custom for this. Uh, by default, they uh, Rode talks about using the main mix. Obviously, it took my microphone out, but uh, that would be, you know, everything. Um, mix minus will be everything minus the source that you're talking about. So this will be everything but the duo chat. Or you can do custom, which is what I recommend you do. And then you can just control everything yourself. Okay. All right, next thing we'll do, we'll talk about the USB secondary, which is my game PC. Uh, again, um, if I want to send stuff to my game PC, this is what I'm sending. Uh, so I've got uh, my microphone level going there. I've got the A and B virtual, and I've got music going there. Uh, and it works well. Now, I will tell you on my game PC, what I have done is I'm using a software mixer. It's uh, the Steel Series Sonar that I've done a video on. That I've done virtual mixing in my game PC to control the different levels that come over, including music, browser audio, and all that stuff. You might want to do that. It's a good idea to do that. You can do that. It's free. If you have voice meter, you can use that. Uh, Unify, if you have access to Rhodes at Unify, you can do that. Or Wavelink, any of those programs that allow you to do that kind of mixing. There's, there's, a, there's a number of free ones out there that you can download and try. Logitech makes one now, uh, for instance. It's called Router, I think, or Routing, something like that. They're out there, and that's kind of how I control the audio on the game PC, and that all comes into the USB secondary. Now, the rest of them are all personal things. These are my headphones. This is my mix for my headphones. Again, I, I've got my microphone turned down. I don't want to listen to myself, but if I need to, I can turn it up and I can hear myself. I've got music. I've got my A and B virtual devices. I've got the sound pads. I don't want to listen to these super loud compared to the, to the stream. Uh, so, you know, I can control these. And then obviously I can control the levels of the game audio, you know, from my game PC and then from the chat. Same thing for my studio monitors as I, you know, I can show you, I actually, you know, have studio monitors that I have plugged up into the back of the roadcaster. And so I do have a mix specifically for my studio monitors, mainly for music and for con for making videos and that sort of thing. And I want to listen through my studio monitors instead of wearing headphones. That's what I've got those hooked to. And this is of course the mix there. All right. That's pretty much all you need to know about how to route, you know, your audio inside a Rodecaster. This will be the perfect setup for most people, I think. Now, for Windows routing, this is different. So let me open up the sound settings. And you will see the different devices that I've got set up for your volume mixer. All right, so here uh, under your devices, this is where you're going to assign the virtual devices that Rode has now given us. Uh, so for Google Chrome, for instance, I've got this going to Virtual B for a browser. For Discord, I've actually used Discord and set up this inside of Discord instead of doing it inside of Windows. But you can do this inside of Windows too if you wanted to set this up for uh, your output device. You can actually set this up for speakers, Duo Chat. Okay, that will be your that will be what you're hearing uh, in the chat, Duo Chat uh, bus or you can set this uh, input device. You can set this up for duo chat input, which would be your microphone. Okay. But I've done this inside of Discord, but for say something like Spotify, I've set this up to music. This is the music virtual device. That's how I have these set up inside of Windows. And that's why how you tell these apps to go to that. Again, if you want to do Apple Music, you can also send that to this music uh, virtual device. It'll take multiple apps at one time. Okay, you don't have to, uh, you don't have to just have one app going to it. That's what's so cool about these things. All right, so I, what I'll do is I always set up OBS to go to the virtual A, and then I can control and have monitor audio from OBS, say alerts and that sort of thing will come in through virtual A. So that's what you can use. Now, obviously you can see here, 
uh, your output device. Also, I have set to virtual A. So this would be, you know, Windows system audio. Uh, also input device here. This is the duo chat. So this would be my microphone, as I said. For the main, I want to show you the name of this because this is, I was talking about it. I was going to talk about this at the end of the video. Uh, where is it at? Speakers. All right. So when you, when you get this installed, if you've been using your roadcaster for a long time, you will notice that it used to be called duo main stereo, I believe, or stereo duo main or stereo pro two main. Now it's called duo main or pro two main multi-track. All right. Don't get this confused and think that, oh crap, I'm in multi-track mode. You're not. That's just the name of this. When I saw this initially, I thought that I needed to be in multi-track mode, which is a setting in your roadcaster that you would set up. And that's going to then split up everything into 16 devices, okay? That you would then be able to use, but you need to be able to use this through an ASIO driver, the ASIO for all driver to be specific. Didn't have any of that set up. So when I was trying to get this to work in OBS, I could not get this to work at all. A little bit of research, is where I found out, oh crap, I should not be in multi-track mode because I'm not using this in multi-track. I should just take that out of multi-track. And I ended up doing this, which is not what you wanna do. So let me show you now. So when you go to output and you go to multi-track, you get a USB one output and you turn this from off to either pre-fader or post-fader, that is going to switch you to multi-track mode, which is then going to require an ASIO for all driver so that it can send 16 individual channels to a device that uses ASIO drivers. Now for OBS, you need a plugin for this to work, which you can download. And on Rode's website, and I'll provide a link for this too, you can download this plugin. Now, I'm not gonna go into detail with that right now. That's gonna be a totally separate video that you'll need to subscribe to here on this channel and you and hit the bell and you'll know when that video goes live so that you can learn how to set up multi-track yourself if you want me to walk you through it if not and you feel brave enough to conquer it on your own well click on a link down in the description and go at it but if you find yourself messed up and you want to get back into the regular mode just go to usb1 output click off um, and if you're using OBS, you're going to have to restart that so that OBS can then recognize the normal output again. Listen, that's it, everybody. I appreciate you watching the video. If you got any questions about this, let me know. I will try my best to uh, you know, describe uh, what my personal setup is inside of uh, OBS and you know everything here. But well, listen, I hope this video helped you out. Again, in the descriptions, uh, we'll have all the links for everything that you need uh, down below. All right, everybody, thank you for watching. Have a great day. We'll see you later.